Hello, everyone. Let's uh, get it started, shall we? Danny here from the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia. That's me there in the corner. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, happy to welcome you all to this evening's webinar, Talking Politics, Amplifying Your Community's Voice. Thank you so much for all joining us here so early. We are recording now. So uh, for people who've come in late, people who aren't able to make it, they're not going to be able to know that I'm saying this. And as with all of our webinars, uh, we do make a recording of it and we make it available shortly afterwards the session. Um, time to do a little bit of the ye old housekeeping. 2019 CBAA Awards are open now. Get your entries in. They're open until uh, the end of the month. Further details are available at cbaa.org.au. Be sure to get on down there and check it all out. Going to be a great event. It is all part of our uh, 2019 CBAA conference happening from the 24th to the 27th of October at the Pullman on the Park in Melbourne. The premier gathering of community broadcasters. Tonight's webinar, Talking Politics, Amplifying Your Community's Voice. Uh, in the media and particularly in the lead up to elections, we hear a lot from politicians about policy, law reform and general political debate. And while it's vital to connect your community with your political representatives, community broadcasters equally have a vital role to play in ensuring people affected by policy have their voices heard on air. So tonight we're talking about how you can reach people in your community from those marginal groups to discuss the issues affecting them. Very happy to, tonight to be joined by Dr. Eduardo Jordan, a journalist and so many other things, primarily for tonight's session, uh, we'll look towards his expertise as uh, part of the why that's independent news and current affairs available on community broadcasting and also the Fair Comment radio program on 4EB. Um, Eduardo, if you're there, you can feel free to turn your camera on now and show everyone your happy smiley face, should you be so inclined. There's Eduardo. Hey, dude, how are you going? Hello, um, guys. How are you? All the better for having you here. And Michele Vescio from uh, 3CR, aka MV, um, who is a producer, program, a mentor, trainer, a broadcast technician of current affairs and all sorts of other things. So happy to have MV in the house with us. MV, if you're there, maybe you might want to turn on your camera quickly, if that's all right. There we are. Hi, Hi. thank you for having me here. Thank you so much for joining us. So uh, I owe it to both of you, obviously sort of you're um, well-versed in volunteering to help your fellow community broadcasters. Thank you so much for taking on that responsibility for tonight's session. It really is very much appreciated. Um, tonight's session, we'll discuss why it's important to represent your community on air and political discussion, how to consider who the best person to speak on an issue may be, tips for finding and connecting with people from marginal communities, um, and so much more. Now, Eduardo, what I might do is I will get you to take control of the slides, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Okay, so it's... Just down the bottom. Uh, I'm approving your shared content and uh, should be able to take that on. We should be seeing you very, very soon and then I'll be able to mute myself. You'll be able to do your thing. Uh, is it showing up your screen just yet, mate? Okay. Oh, maybe I'll stop my share and then that'll allow you to do it. <clears throat> okay, hopefully it'll let you do it now, mate. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries, but I cannot see the presentation. But anyway, um, here it is. Can everyone see the uh, content? Not as yet. Okay. Uh, I should, and John Elias has pointed out to me that the uh, next month's webinar is May. What a silly Billy I am. Uh, <laughs> or this month's webinar, rather. Uh, but yeah, the uh, uh, thing is up, and I believe you're all ready to go, unless I'm very much mistaken. Oh, no worries. Just, I, ah, here it is. Excellent. No. There you go. All right. Well, first of all, thank you very much for attending this webinar. This is the first webinar that I've been um, helping with. So thank you very much. And I apologize for the cough. Uh, I just recently got out of a, um, of a cold. So if I cough, if I cough uh, at some point, I really apologize. Um, well, a little bit about, about me. I've been volunteering for The Wire for around nine years now. This year's going to be nine years. I started in 2010. 
And now I'm in charge of the social media aspect for Brisbane. Um, the Wire is produced in Sydney with two SCR, Radio Adelaide in Adelaide and 4EB here in, well, in Brisbane and based at the Gold Coast at this, uh, as we speak. But it's a consortium of community radio stations and we give basically voice to, to the community. Um, <clears throat> I'm also a radio co-producer for Fair Comment and I co-produce along with 4ZZZ. So we are two radio producers doing the, the radio program, but I'll speak about that a little bit later. Um, why is it important to represent your community? Uh, well, first of all, because um, you're the community, and especially right now in you know in the political discourse of the election campaigns, etc. Um, we usually don't get um, what's the name? We don't get represented. Um, or we don't get all the information that we need. So we need to, to, to find it out. As a journalist, you need to go and get the facts and, and, and all the information. So it's important to represent your community because it strengthens the community and you give a voice usually not given on commercial media. Uh, this is very important because, um, as you know, on um, the CBAA can, can confirm that, uh, Australia has around 5 million people listening to community media or listening to community radio and media, etc. So community media, it's a very strong um, outlet. And usually we represent all the voices that are for, um, forgotten in, in commercial media. You usually see a lot of um, issues and they're always political or entertainment, Kim Kardashian, etc. But not... Um, Sometimes you don't see the community well represented, especially on a on a uh, multicultural um, aspect for what is Australia is. So it always strengthens the community. You will offer good reporting with facts and interviews, and you will showcase the issues affecting your community. Um, we will talk a little bit about that um, later on. But um, once you are in touch with the community and not for profits, you are basically giving them, giving them a voice, a space where they can go and say, well, this is what is affecting us. This is the issue what we're having be, um, with the government, um, especially as well with um, the budget that it was released in May. You will um, find that a lot of organizations and a lot of the community, um, the community groups as well, um, they will uh, respond to the budget. And it's important to give them a voice because most um, Australians are having those issues, if, if you know what I mean. Um, but also, uh, as a journalist, or, as a, or you know, as part of the community media, you can give the feedback to the politicians. You cannot trust only on what Politic, uh, I mean, what politicians are telling you, that would be more of a PR exercise, like public relations exercise. So if you have the content of um, politicians, it's okay to be in touch with the politicians, but not only get all, getting all the information from them, but it's also getting in touch with the community and see if that's um, equal and if it's, you know, um, I forgot the word, but if it's, you know, um, accurate, that in the information that it's given to you. So you, you are basically giving this feedback to the government and politicians and you make them accountable of the actions. So that's, this is why it's very important. And I think it's one of the most critical um, points to get out of the, to get out of it. Um, and also you get the access and representation. You represent your community, you represent, um, you represent an important part. Just remember the journalism and reporting issues from your community. It's called the Ford Estate. And it's basically ba making yourself, reporting is making accountable, making the government accountable for their actions and the responsibilities and their duties as, as um, as a government. So it's that's why it's very important, the community representation. But it's very difficult sometimes, it's very challenging to, 
to get someone to speak about different issues. Uh, usually you get the politician, but um, the politicians, ministers, etc., will not speak with community media unless it's um, elections or it's something related with their media releases. So it's always good to speak with not-for-profit groups. Um, they are always interested in speaking about different issues. If there's a homeless, a homeless organization um, or an organization helping homeless people in your uh, community, it's always good to keep the connection going. And you, you can receive the media releases on different topics. And it's very easy. You can just go on their website and say, I would like to receive your media releases and just go. You just need to subscribe to your email. So that's one, um, one, one way to find out who are you speaking with. Um, if someone in the community you know is experiencing a tough issue, let them know their case might not be the only one and ask if they want to be interviewed. Sometimes uh, in, in the political discourse, and I've, and I've experienced that, they're talking, for example, about Centrelink and, and Newstart and, and et cetera, but no one is asking the community, you know, on the other side. Basically, there's this big um, contradiction between what the politicians and, and, and the government and the community is. So if someone is experiencing like a very interesting story or a very, or they're facing an interesting journey, go and ask them, you know what, you're not the only one. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of cases out there. Um, would you like me to interview you, you know, for community radio and that will give you the power of representing your voice. That's very, very important. Um, the other people that you can speak to is policymakers. You can speak with researchers, especially academics. Academics, um, academics are always looking for a platform to speak with. Uh, you can see the conversation website there. It's the conversation.com um, forward slash AU, I guess. And you can see all the academics right there on different topics. Um, different topics. It could be politics, climate change, uh, social movements, etc. And they are always interested in speaking with media. If they are not available for, for interviews because sometimes they're doing research or something, um, you can speak with the media, with the media context from any university and they will tell you, especially in in those small universities, the uh, University of Newcastle, which is in a regional area, uh, the University of Wollongong, et cetera, WA as well, um, Murdoch University, the University of Western Australia, et cetera. Just go, go with universities because they have the research and also they can give you more examples on, on what, what to do. They have the research, they have the facts. So they're always looking for, for, for information with academics. Um, how to speak with minorities, and that's a very good. I, I'm I'm coming. From, I, I am from Mexico, and I consider myself as as a minority. Um, you know, um, from ethnical background, part of the LGBTIQ community as well. And the first topic I wrote is sensory journalism. This is not a st uh, studied area. Um, I basically. One of my lecturers uh, coined <laughs> the concept, and it's basically if you're around, you know, let's say on the bus, uh, on the bus, or on the train, or anywhere, you know, when you're with the community, have a listen and have a look around uh, your surroundings. You might find really interesting stories, and just go and say, well, I'm from this community radio station and from this community media. Can I um, interview you about what you're passing through? I couldn't. Uh, avoid hearing what you were saying, etc. Um, as I mentioned, you can subscribe to media releases for different uh, network groups. There's a lot of ethnic background groups and associations as well. They have their websites. Um, locally, you can go and, and see your local not-for-profits and connect with them. In my case, this is not a, a local from here from the Gold Coast, but I have a really good connection with Royal Far West in Sydney. And they are always sending me media releases about their events, about what's happening with um, health in, in children in remote and regional areas. So that's 
it's it's always important to keep in touch and keep the connection going. Um, ask them again if if someone affected by an issue wants to talk with you. Um, in especially not for profits, they have volunteers that are that are volunteering because that organization has helped them overcome a challenge, and they they are more than happy to speak with you. Um, I remember one of the stories for the wire was doing a story about. Uh, breast cancer or something like that I can't remember and I told the organization could you please um, is there someone from your organization that would be able to to talk to me about their personal journey yeah not a problem and I got the interview and she was very happy to speak with me so it's always good to get, tell the not-for-profits saying well I would like to speak with someone who's passing a, a journey or if they're having a difficulty or there's an issue affecting them from the government side of, of things and they will be able to help you out. Um, and I'll just have uh, five more minutes to tell you about um, how we do things at the Wire and Fair Comment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Wire is a national current affairs radio program, and we go to approximately 140 community radio stations, and we have an editorial guide. Um, the editorial guide basically states that we need to give a voice um, to minorities and the community. Um, it could be uh, people in regional areas, it could be refugees, asylum seekers, um, LGBTIQ um, groups or organizations, and people who are facing a, a, a tough time. It's always good to, to, to go to the not-for-profits helping these minorities and they will be able to help you out and to interview and produce a really good story. Um, we usually speak with politicians, but we do not trust what they're saying sometimes. Uh, we need to take really, really careful what we're, what we're doing on, on, on the wire with, with politicians. And it's, it's very, we, we need to be very upfront, upfront with them. Uh, we speak with not-for-profits, we speak with network groups, um, ambassadors. I've spoken with the ambassador of Cuba some time ago about private property in Cuba, that was a very interesting story. Um, academics as well, they're very, very interested in helping out. Um, network groups from minorities, if you know there's a, uh, let's say, a um, Latin American network group in your local community, go and approach them and let them know that you work for community media. They're always looking for, for ways to promote events or ways to, uh, to say things uh, about the government, etc., And affected Australians, sensory journalism, go and look at, at your surrounds and see what's going on. With fair comment is um, similar. It's just a little bit um, different in this sense because we take human interest um, stories, perspective on issues affecting the community. We we do have a lot of stories um, with the First Nations uh, Australians. We do have a lot of uh, stories as well from farmers and people in regional areas. Although the challenge is getting those stories because we're based in Brisbane and we don't have the budget for going to the, com to the rural area. So we are always relying on different community, regional community radio stations for their story for their stories and their interviews as well. Um, we try to speak with members of the community. Um, I live in the Gold Coast, uh, Demi lives in Brisbane. So we try to make as much connection with the community as possible. Uh, sometimes it's very, it's, it's a challenge. So we rely on other uh, community radio stations as well. So um, that's basically what we do. Demi and I gather together once, once a week. Um, we deliver which stories go on, on fair comment, we produce, it goes on air, and it's on, on a podcast. You can check us out on Spotify. Um, just a little bit of commercial day. Um, I think that would be all on my side at the moment. Uh, so I would like to give the microphone to Michelle from CCR. Uh, it's Michele MV. Uh, do you read us? Are you ready to go? Um, and are you, I will stop sharing the screen at the moment. So yep. I'll let you share the screen. Uh, Eduardo, I will 
uh, turn your camera off for the time being. Will we get you to join us uh, back here in a little bit once um, MV's finished? Um, MV, do you read me? I've got your mic on now. I do. Yes, can you hear me? I can indeed hear you. And are you able to hit the share button so you can show anything that you might want to show? I'm not going to be showing anything. I'm just going to be speaking. Excellent. No worries at all. We all might get you to put your camera on if that's, if that's all right with you. Yeah, sure. Is it just to start video, isn't it? Uh, yes. You can't start your video because the host has stopped it. Oh, dear. That would be me who's done that. <laughs> What's this? I'm trying to take away your shine or something like that. Gee, that's no good at all. Um, okay. Ask to start video. There you go. You should be able to start, to start, start my video. Yeah, great. Okay. Thanks for that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I apologise for also the um, the glare in my glasses, but without them, I can't see. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on the webinar. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak about the work that we do 3CR and also just want to pay respects uh, to the traditional owners of the land in which we're meeting on. Um, so like for me, that's the, the First Nations people of the Kulin Nation. I just pay respects to the elders past, present and emerging. For you, for those who don't know, 3CR is a dynamic hub. It's been producing radio since um, 1976. Currently there are 400 volunteers one full-time staff member and five part-time staff members. Uh, we broadcast in about, not about, but 125 radio programs every week. We've got 14 community language programs and we have 10 hours dedicated to Indigenous programming. So its core business is to provide a voice for those who are denied access in the mass media. So when we think of that, those are people who are being disenfranchised, um, First Nations people, women, queer people, um, workers, uh, other community groups, the, the, the homeless and refugees. That's just to name um, a few of the people that we give a voice to. Um, unlike other um, media organisations, 3CR is uh, genuinely owned by the community. So the groups who, and the individuals who broadcast are actually the people who own a piece of the station and that obviously becomes part of our core business when we think about things like fundraising and our radio form which is on later on this year so we have a lot of people that are from different activist groups and community groups and it's a, a wonderful hub so that's just a little bit of info of 3cr more information at 3cr.org.au if you want to get um, a more complete understanding of what we do I suppose I'm going to take the point of how we provide voices to those people who don't usually get an opportunity to speak in mass media and how 3CR provides an agency empowerment and uh, just an opportunity to voice people's issues and then the way we engage them. Um, when we speak about politics, we think about the way that we unpack that for our listeners. Are uh, we speaking about activism? further action or a call to action and in that way what we would like to do is also challenge the way we talk about issues and topics of interest. Um, 3CR is uniquely placed as I said because we have no central editorial team um, however staff provide guidance um, and they give us access to media releases but the broadcast teams connect with their own communities and networks and the majority of the time we are engaging with grassroots organizations and groups um, for instance we have a program called dirt radio which is sponsored by um, friends of the earth on smith street in collingwood and that is uh, a program that speaks about the, the environment and sustainability um, they're the types of groups that we engage with i suppose from a political sense when we're thinking about how to undertake um, political narratives with the many groups that we have. Um, also want to say um, Happy May Day. Um, this is a really significant day for us. Um, uh, 3CR is so deeply involved in the trade union movement. And in fact, 43 years ago today, 3CR had its first tech test of 3CR and of its license. So it's a really significant day for us. Uh, being May Day every year that we get to celebrate this. Um, 
politically we engage with a lot of the rallies and the events that happen within our area in Nam, so-called Melbourne. Uh, when we think of the Invasion Day broadcast, we directly work with Indigenous programmers at 3CR in order to provide a platform um, for that rally and for that event. And we actually um, suspend usual programming during that day so that we can talk about Indigenous rights and we cross live to the rally. And I'm part of the tech, one, one part of the tech team that actually goes to the rallies and records the rallies as a live cross. So it's not even a recording, it's, it's a live feed from the rally itself. And that's a really amazing experience to be in the thick of it and to be with the people that are there and to be engaged with First Nations people. Um, some of the other ways we engage politically, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a Palestinian broadcaster at 3CR held a BDS Palestine um, segment, so boycott, divest and sanction in relation to what is going on in Palestine. And this was a, a really great idea because the idea to hold this BDS information night was initiated by two of the broadcasters at 3CR and it just spoke about the way that we can uh, politicise, if you will, um, the way we broadcast on 3CR and what voices to include and what voices not to and how we go about that in a way that is both um, direct yet gentle and respects people's rights. Politically, also, when we, when we are covering a social or political issue, who are we asking to join us? So, in my opinion, bodies, in essence, are political. So, when we think about intersex bodies, uh, sex workers' bodies, queer bodies, in essence, they are political in the way that they are are presented in the media. So when these issues come up, and they have come up, when we think of the plebiscite that we had a little while ago, at the moment there is a lot of issues in relation to intersex bodies, um, and then you have a lot of politicians on the Liberal side who are engaging in really weird behaviour at the moment and saying really distasteful stuff and words about sex workers at the moment. So when those issues come up in the media, who are we asking? to join us on air to speak about those issues. So we talk about those we talk to the people who are marginalized and who, who those issues actually directly affect. So we tend to talk about people's personal narratives, um, asking grassroots groups to join us and speak about those things. We tend to steer away from politicians and academics on our programs because we feel as a station they get a lot of airtime um, in mass media and in other uh, broadcasting um, uh, platforms. So our aim and our core business is to provide a voice to the people who don't get a voice. How do you get in touch with them? You know, attend rallies, attend free sem uh, seminars, attend free talks. Um, I get a lot of interviews myself because I work as a, a mentor for and content support person for 3CR's breakfast programming. And they are programs that run Monday to Friday. And networking is about getting yourself out there and getting yourself involved, really making those connections really tight and just approaching people, cold turkey, and saying, hey, this is who I am. I'd like to speak to you about what's going on, what's your political activism. Uh, be really present in rallies and events that really give a voice to people who don't have a voice and approach organisers that don't usually get approached by mass media. Um, how do you approach these interviews? How do you contribute? They're really interesting questions. How do I contribute or how can I give a voice to people that don't usually get a voice? And the way that we can do that is by inviting people within our space and giving them a voice, giving them agency and empowerment. 
We need to talk about also the needs of the demographics that we are engaging with. So what do they need logistically? Have they ever spoken to you on, um, to anyone on air before or being interviewed for radio? How do we engage with that? You know, we really need to do the work prior to speak to these people on air or as a pre-record so they feel comfortable within the space and give them an opportunity to um, formulate some answers in advance. It's, it's, you know, it's the same way that I have. I have notes as well. So it just gives people that opportunity to feel comfortable within that space as well. Um, networking is where it's at. Attend conferences. Last year I attended the Women's Health Conference of uh, 2018. And from there came quite a lot of interviews. I attended another trade union um, conference in Geelong earlier in 2018. And just getting in touch with those people prior to prior to those events happening is is really important and it's really vital as well. The best people to interview are those, like I said, that are affected by the issues um, from grassroots organisation, marginalised people, and minority group. Yeah, by providing agency, we give them the the opportunity to act independently and make their own free choices about what they're talking about. And they're not by, by doing so, we're not restricting them by any social influences that actually restrict them outside in the mass media. Um, I also get a lot of my interviews and ideas um, from Twitter. Twitter has changed a lot from when I first joined many years ago. It's actually a really amazing news hub. And a lot of uh, journals and news outlets actually have their own Twitter accounts. Some of the ones that I follow are like the Overland Journal, The Nation, The Economist, Slate, The Informer, The Lifted Brow. And most of these engage in news and analysis, or in news analysis rather, from a local and global perspective. So I find that really engaging and really vital um, in finding information. And I've, I've found that a lot of the other um, especially with breakfast broadcasters, I find a lot of the interviews by engaging and being seen on social media. So it's not just about retweeting and, and liking someone else's comment, engaging conversation, engaging critical conversation with other people. And that's the way you can start getting uh, networking as well. Um, I subscribe to a lot of online newspapers and podcasts because they provide uh, a wealth of information about commentary um, that is so vital in the way we access information. I spoke to a friend recently who is a journalism student and she was saying how in her course they are discouraged from speaking about their own opinion um, when they are reporting in, uh, in their classes, which I totally understand in that context and about jumping hoops. But at 3CR, we have the opportunity to uh, push against that and actually put across our own narratives and commentary because we all have a story to tell. Um, a lot of the people that volunteer and work at 3CR are activists themselves and come from marginalised and disenfranchised groups. So we have a wealth of incredible people that broadcast and I'm in a wonderful position to be there. I'm, I'm conscious of time. It is seven. Um, I'm not sure how much longer I was speaking to. So I'm just going to go through my notes. Ah, and just see if there's anything else. Was there anything else there, Danny, that we wanted to address? I feel That's like right. I, a few anecdotes of how, how we do it, but um, I, I mean, I have, I have a lot of information here, but it depends where you want to go. <laughs> if there was anything more that you wanted to discuss in this part, that would be fine. Um, normally we'd ask, wait for the Q&A to ask questions, but seeing as we're on a roll, I'll put this one forward uh, from Greg Hall. He asked if you could talk about the stories which you thought seemed strong, I guess when you were in the production phase, um, but when you put them there, they didn't have the impact that you thought they would. And what lessons you learned from that experience? We always make good stories. What are you talking about? No, sure. Um, lessons to learn. Okay, cool. I suppose with any story that you produce, there's always a lesson to learn. Um, your research. Your research needs to be top, like, top scale. If you are uh, interviewing someone, you need to make sure you have all the background information. I think also the communication prior to the interview is really important. So if you have someone that you're going to have on your show, 
um, ensure that you have a conversation with them prior to the interview, at least via email at the minimal uh, sort of denominator. Um, what else have I learned? Keep your cool, have some notes in front of you, dot points, that's really important. I know that when I first begin, began broadcasting in 2014, I used to get really nervous. I mean, I still get nervous. Um, but having dot points in front of you, having a good uh, rapport with your guests and with your co-hosts and colleagues really helps. I don't know if that even helps. That's my answer, by the way. Danny's gone quiet. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry about that. I'm on two screens at the moment and one of my screens. And oh, that's okay. Does, Ed, does Eduardo maybe have something to add to that? We can bring up both the screens at the moment. Eduardo. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think uh, Michelle has covered really, really well. Um, it's just a matter of practice. And um, I was very, very nervous nine years ago when I started. And because we are in, in a university newsroom, basically, we, we usually don't go out to, to chase the stories, but we are on the phone all the time. Uh, usually when there's something really, really close, well, we'll just go and, and, and get the interview as well, um, or box pops as well. Uh, but I remember the first eight or nine weeks, eight or nine weeks when I was there, I used to have like a template or saying everything on the phone, and I memorized it. And I still know. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Jordan. I'm a journalist from the radio program The Wire. How are you today? Blah 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 blah. So I'm I'm always memorizing that that part of things. And um, once you start doing it, uh, you you get more confident on asking the questions and be, don't be afraid on asking hard questions, like tough questions. I think it's really really good. And you are again. Uh, giving the voice to the community and giving a, a, a proper voice. So I think that's very, very important. Excellent. Uh, Michele and Eduardo, uh, Greg sort of got another question for you. Pre-interview is a great idea, uh, but do you also use it as an opportunity to use your, uh, to audition uh, your potential talent? Audition. What you have to answer. Yeah, Greg, I've never, I've never auditioned um, a guest for a live interview. And I see what you're saying to see if perhaps, I, I figure what you're saying to see if they're appropriate for, for your program. Um, I've never had to do that, but it definitely uh, starts a rapport with your guests prior to getting them live on air because a lot of the broadcast that I do is live and at times podcasts. So I think from that perspective, you begin a conversation and sometimes the idea that you first had... <clears throat> with the guest in relation to the topic that you want to talk about actually evolves and moves away from what you first intentionally thought you would. So I find it as a really good bouncing board to be able to discuss what further you'd like to um, speak about within the interview process. I suppose it is an interview. Uh, I suppose it is an audition in a way. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Um, and please excuse my late response on some of these things. I am dealing with some tech issues, as I always do. Uh, uh, Greg agrees, pre-interviews are a great idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, uh, great answer. Thank you very much, as I expected he'd say. Now, hopefully you're seeing on your screen at the moment a list of resources that are available with you that you can uh, use to help with your engagement um, uh, with politicians, unless I'm showing the uh, very wrong slide. Are people seeing that there at the moment? They're seeing the uh, Media Diversity Australia Indigenous Reporting. Yeah, and we can see it. Excellent. And big shout outs to MV there for um, uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, the uh, Kulin Nation. Um, got to give it up on behalf of me and Geordie to the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation here in Sydney and feel free to say what's up to the traditional owners of for the land from wherever you're joining us from there in the instant message box. Um, now, I believe we are going to go back to uh, you, Eduardo, if you're there, if you read us. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, do we have some final thoughts uh, from you before we sort of open it up and see if there's any more questions from our attendees? Um, 
Well, I think I think everything is wrapped up uh, just with the resources as well. Um, this group, Media Diversity Australia, is um, gaining momentum. Uh, very soon we will be opening the Queensland chapter, uh, which I am uh, part of the committee, and I'm very excited to, to be in touch. And actually on Saturday we will have a, a, a community meeting um, to discuss the, um, the event. We're bringing a lot of journalists and um, community media is uh, a really is a core basically of, of, of the um, of the event and um, they they produce these uh, the indigenous reporting handbook and later this year uh, we will be producing uh, releasing the reporting handbook on issues about disabilities um, we have our disabilities officer working on that um, Lisa Cox uh, is really well known here in Queensland for having all those connections and we are um, compiling all the inf information and also we are going to different uh, not-for-profits and community groups to see what they think about it. It's going to be a, long, uh, a little bit of a long process but uh, later in the year we will be uh, releasing that for on behalf of Media Diversity Australia. So yeah. And would I be correct in assuming that Media Diversity Australia is sort of um, uh, mainly uh, meeting up and sharing via the Facebook group? Uh, there's a Facebook group, yes. Uh, you can uh, ask um, access. It's Media Diversity Australia group. And there's a Facebook page, the official one. It's Media Diversity Australia. Um, we will be, we are doing basically networking events uh, for journalism, you know, in the industry and doing the connections properly. So because we think um, there's a lack of diversity in the Australian newsrooms, especially in commercial media. So community media is is the core of our um, the core of our group. We are representing the multicultural, multi-ethnic um, community across Australia that it's well underrepresented in, in, in commercial media. So um, we're we're giving the space to community media too. Awesome. That's great. Uh, now, uh, any of our uh, attendees, if you had any further questions uh, for our wonderful, wonderful presenters, please speak now. We'll forever hold your peace. And by forever hold your peace, I mean, you can get in touch with us uh, after the fact. Uh, just uh, office at cbaa.org.au is the place to go to to find out more about everything we're doing. Um, you'll notice also that the CBAA Political Engagement Toolkit is one of the resources that we refer to there. We love that. Uh, we think it's a great way for community broadcasters to sort of check out the resources that are available there and use that to get in touch with their local politicians. Um, Mindframe, who are mental health experts and uh, uh, those people who've been to a few CBAA conferences in the past will know that we've had a long association with them. Um, they've got some great resources available and, of course, the expert guide there to speaking with academics. Um, I will follow up with everyone with direct links to all of those resources referred to after this evening's webinar. So uh, just in case you're sort of not having time to Google them now, don't worry, that information will be forthcoming. Um, it should also let you know that our next webinar taking place not at March that's in May why would you put March there for? <laughs> what are you some sort of time traveler um, uh, no spoilers I'm not some sort of time traveler that's Wednesday 27th of March hopefully there is a 27th in March it's the last Wednesday of the month what's the calendar say <clears throat> not even a 27th of March uh, no there wouldn't be because it's on a Wednesday so it'll be the 29th of May 29th of May, regulatory refresher with the ACMA. That's the Australian Communications and Media Authority. They'll be joining us and uh, they'll be answering all of the questions that you might have to ensure that your station is compliant with everything that you need to be compliant with. Um, uh, no more questions I see coming through, so I'd like to take this time to thank MV, Eduardo and Geordie from the Community Media Training Organisation. Our webinars couldn't go ahead if it wasn't for the love and support of the Community Media Training Organisation, cmto.org.au. I think, Geordie, you might have had something that you wanted to bring up quickly before we close on out of here for the evening. 
Yes, I did. Um, thanks, MV and Eduardo. Fantastic presentation and great to hear you're keeping the journalism fires burning across the country for community radio. That's definitely something very close to my heart. And I wanted to just share with everybody um, that the CMTO training applications are now open and we have a very special offering at the moment that um, stations can actually apply for. I've just shared the application up on the screen. Um, you can go to the CMTO website and click on that. This is fully subsidised training for community radio stations all across the country and we have one uh, news training package at the moment. So it's four pathway sessions, that's non-accredited training, um, in interviewing, presentation, audio editing and news writing. So it's a package that you could actually run at your station um, to get people interested and to give them some basic skills in actually producing news content at your, at your station. And it follows very much along the lines of this community radio journalism that we all do um, and reaching out to your communities of interest to generate stories. So I encourage you to jump on to cmto.org.au and look through that training application. There's plenty of things on offer and um, send it along to your station manager um, or your committee of management or your board um, and see if they could fill it in and actually get some of that training happening at your station. Totally free. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Geordie. Thanks again, MV and Eduardo. Thanks very much, everyone who attended. It's great to have you here. Um. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate the opportunity to have, um, yeah, to be included in this uh, discussion. It's great. And check out all the content that's available on the uh, respective websites for both 4EB and 3CR and, of course, Fair Comment available via the Community Radio Network. Um, yes. and, and The Wire, 5 o'clock every afternoon. It's great stuff. 29th of May is the next webinar. Don't listen to what it says on your screen, even though I actually <laughs> typed up that slide. Danny from the CBAA might be an idiot. And with that... Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you.